Welcome to Vertical with Veter, a podcast exploring the latest in vertical storage solutions. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Vertical with Veter, a Veter podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Litwin, the voice of B2B. And folks, thanks so much for joining us on another episode of the show. I really appreciate you listening along to some quality Veter thought leadership as we explore various intersections in different industries, but really grounding everything around vertical lift machines and broader changes to warehouse and industrial management. As you're listening to our Grounded Conversation today, make sure that you're heading to our website, storevertical.com. Again, storevertical.com for more information on some of the technologies and use cases and also other content that we might discuss today. You can find podcasts, articles, and more on our site. You can also subscribe to Vertical with Veter on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Just search up Vertical with Veter, hit that subscribe button, and you'll have a full catalog of previous conversations as well as notifications when we drop new ones. So on today's episode of the show, we wanted to try to bring the benefits of a vertical lift machine down to earth. We've covered a lot of high-level impacts in industrial, retail, and manufacturing industries, how they're transforming, how vertical lift machines, specifically Veter's vertical lift machines, are filling in a lot of gaps in warehouse management, fulfillment services, etc. But today, we're taking that big picture and we're using it to paint a smaller picture, a picture of the end user experience. And to do that, we're highlighting a customer of Veter's, their industry, and their business needs, and more specifically, where vertical lift machines fit into their technology and management strategies, and what value a third-party partner like Veter can provide to an end user beyond just the sourcing of hardware and tech. So here to share his insights is Ralph Fair. He's president and CEO of Elias Woodwork. Ralph, great to have you on. How are you doing? Good, thanks. Pleased to be here. Yeah, real pleasure getting to chat today. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, so before we jump in, give us a quick overview here of uh, what Elias does. I know that Elias Woodwork offers a diverse product line of wood solutions, everything from cabinet doors to refacing of facades and kitchen and bath, as well as automotive industries. But can you give us that deeper dive on the, the work your company does, the industries you serve, and why you've honed your company to serve those industries? Well, Elias Woodwork and Manufacturing has been around since about 1980 and started as a kitchen cabinet manufacturer. Our company philosophy has been to be a very top of quality in production with a really quick turnaround. So price would be less of an issue. Uh, we just didn't want to be a bottom feeder and, you know, duking it out with uh, the all the uh, giant companies out there. Uh, We are highly automated to help us with both uh, consistency of quality as well as speed. And in the uh, late 90s, we were sought out by Dalmer Benz because of our reputation for quality. And that launched us into building wood parts for their interiors of some of their lines. Over the years, we have also branched into thermal foiling business. So by now we employ about 450 people in two factories totaling about 500,000 square feet. Uh, doing uh, the things you mentioned, uh, automotive interiors, cabinet doors, moldings, turning specialties for cabinet manufacturing industry, um, working for other cabinet companies and retailers servicing the home construction and renovation markets. That's a wide variety. And in that wide variety, you have focused on offering full service finished wood solutions, meaning that the woodworking process, regardless of industry and regardless of solution from start to finish, is an in-house process. So can you give us some more detail on the various steps of your production process as well as standards of quality, especially as you've expanded into more industries and how this shapes your operations and facilities management? Okay, well, yeah, we take it from raw material to ready to install on each item we produce. And we could be here all day if I wanted to go down every product line, but uh, we we do not do final assembly. We provide a ready to assemble kit in every case. This means goods are sent out pre-finished and that's done with highly automated equipment and then hand inspected to ensure zero defects. Our, um, our finished products go 
out around the world and we simply can't have items come back to us as unsatisfactory. Uh, the order must be complete and perfect and packed and uh, to ensure no shipping damage. And uh, that's pretty extensive all by itself. Uh, this is, you know, this is all a very expensive proposition, very difficult to achieve, where every last person working here has to have the same goals in mind. But it's doable, even at the rate of more, I think we're shipping a little more than 80 kitchens a day right now. Uh, plus a whole lot of other items going out. Uh, it's, it's a testament to our workforce and their commitment for sure, and a, and a lot of organizational effort. How does the fact that you deliver on a uh, ready-to-build kit also shape some of your operations or facilities management? Uh, you know, does the fact that you're not delivering a completely finished solution uh, change the way that you interface with your customers as well as manage the process? First off, I guess we, uh, we've we had to have a really robust and talented IT team, uh, IT team uh, as part of our business. These guys are amazing and they're actually being used as a resource by some companies like Home Depot and other large customers to help them with setting up their own communications and order portals and et cetera. You know, helping them integrate with our manufacturing process so they can look into our factories and see where orders are at. Then coupled with an R&D team that is capable of designing and building our own automation equipment, uh, to some extent at least, sets us apart by quite a bit. Uh, we have an enterprise solution ERP system, uh, largely developed in house to allow total parametric mass customization of virtually every product we manufacture. Mass customization requires a great deal of communication, uh, especially when it's compounded by the desire for a quick turnaround. And the systems have to be in place on all fronts to help that to happen. We use tablets and smartphones that are up to date in real time with all manufacturing aspects. And we use special software to manage equipment maintenance, fix asset control and replacement parts inventory as well. Uh, it's all kind of mind blowing when you, uh, when you look back at how far we've come since those early days and, and how difficult it is for a new startup who would like to be set up this way. Uh, so I, you know, I feel for people just getting into stuff, but um, yeah, it, uh, it's it's quite a deal these days. Before we get into more specifically how you've used vertical lift machines in this broader operations and facility management context, I want to highlight a few of Elias's differentiators just to better understand how this impacts your facilities management needs. So you mentioned robust IT team, and I think a big part of that is also developing and managing communication channels. This is something that you highlight as a differentiator, and it's a big part of what your company does to separate itself by providing robust comms with your client throughout the entire process. You use a proprietary portal to share updates on a project and make sure all parties are in on every necessary step of the process. So I'm curious, what kind of oversight does this force you to have over your materials, your manufacturing space, and your general output to be able to have that constant flow of communication? How does this impact your facilities? Well, it's like I said, you know, we, we have to have uh, tablets and phones and, and programs, uh, software running so that, you know, people kind of know where everything is at at all times, uh, it, not just, uh, you know, at an order level, but at an individual uh, part of an order level. And we really have to have a very tight, cohesive uh, group of people working, you know, toward the same goals. Uh, it's it's organizationally uh, pretty challenging, but you know we have some profit share systems and things in place that really motivate people to uh, all take care of their little part of the business and 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 be pulling the rope in the same direction. So there's no tug of wars anywhere. Um, I mean, it, it you know you're always uh, you're playing whack a mole with little things that come up here and there. But yeah, we we, um, we work pretty hard at making sure that um, the communication uh, is top shelf everywhere and that we are uh, all on the same page. You've also focused on developing a lean manufacturing process, and this has been done to differentiate 
your operations and your service, also that bottom line, right? And this has led to an environmentally driven strategy of Elias's to reduce and remove redundancy, waste, and unnecessary product storage within your workflow. So can you give us more detail there as well on how you manufacture lean, how you've developed that process, uh, and also break down how lean manufacturing has shaped your facilities needs and operations? Yeah, we try very hard not to have more than necessary work in progress. Uh, there are exceptions to every theory, I suppose. Uh, everything at the right place and within reach is one tenant uh, for the uh, equipment operator's efficiency we stress, and we make nothing for inventory as we are a custom shop. A custom shop on steroids, I suppose you'd say. We have a, a large inventory of raw material, and that might be one place where we don't subscribe to lean. Uh, we're always working to eliminate non-value added work, except uh, in the inspection departments where it's more about preventing non-value added rejection work. Uh, we are fairly vertically integrated, so we have a better control on quality and don't outsource much of anything except the supply of raw materials, which we think we keep uh, plenty on hand, but it's really only maybe about 15 to 30 days worth in most cases. Uh, quick turnaround we try for demands we have raw material ready to go at all times and demands quick in and quick out. Uh, so high efficiency storage uh, in good density is important to us. Can you expand a little bit more on the environmentally driven side of that vision and how a uh, green conscience, I guess, for you know, lack of a better way to phrase it, how does that inform how you manage your facilities as well as uh, some of the investments you make in any supporting technologies or processes? Okay, well, there's lots of things you touched on there, that question. Like, I mean, uh, for, for instance, we have high efficiency automated painting equipment, which reclaims the overspray onto belts, which gets scraped off and get reused. So there's, you know, virtually nothing going not onto the finished product. And uh, uh, we don't have to, uh, well, A, we don't have to buy as much material, but we also don't have to waste as much and put as much into the air in the way of pollution and so on. Uh, we work very hard also at um, making good use of the fiber uh, we purchase, you know, the wood fiber, uh, making sure that we have a product line that, uh, you know, where we use the long clear pieces uh, first um, to make uh, long linear moldings and so on and so forth. And then the, 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 the parts that have knots in them, uh, you know, the pieces between those knots end up being a little shorter, but we, can, we have products that can use that material. So we throw very little out. Uh, as it stands, I mean, we we really don't throw any out. We we actually heat the the building with uh, the the uh, little bit of offfall that there is. But um, yeah, it's wow. That's a it's a, a that's a big discussion. Uh, and uh, floor space in this northern climate is very expensive. Uh, not just from a capital asset, uh, you know, purchasing point of view, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's maintaining that square footage and heating it and keeping, uh, uh, paying taxes on it and so on. So, you know, vertical storage in the, the way VLM, uh, the vertical uh, lift uh, machinery works, uh, helps us get a higher storage density for our um, inventory uh, on the work in progress and the small parts kind of end of it, uh, you know, helps us improve that a lot. And I guess that's what we really like about it. All right, Ralph, let's go ahead and track that vertical lift machine journey now. I want to lay out the reasoning first for why you went with a vertical lift machine. When you were in the search for a facilities solution, what were your main pain points across the warehouse and manufacturing floor? And how were these pain points uh, impacting various specifics? So uh, let's start there first. When you were in search of the solution, what were your main pain points, just kind of in general, in your facilities management space? And then we'll get a little more granular. Okay, first off, we tried to, what we had was rows of ready racking and we had a um, order picking 
uh, a machine that has a vertical lift uh, where a person rides up with uh, on a vertical lift and horizontally it drives all over and the person could pick from the ready racking onto uh, you know um, a carrier uh, tray that it has and bring it to um, uh, a desk where we uh, organize the uh, the order and um, it, it was inefficient in that there's a lot of time involved in picking just one item so the, the operators tended to have to be very well trained and know you know three orders at the same time where they would have to pick uh you know like products from the same area that they were up uh zooming around with and and you know so you can kind of tell where we're what that would be like but so we first of all we shopped around a little bit and um look for something that emulates that and there's many systems out there like that the, you know i mean some of the big amazon warehouses and those uh, use these systems that where there is a track on the ceiling and one on the floor and this machine uh, zips back and forth and picks things out of a racking system but uh what we found was that there's so much wasted space uh when these stat these shelf heights are static and um, you, you, you take a lot of floor space with all this ready racking. When we came across the uh, VLM made by Veter, we realized that this thing has the ability to, um, uh, much as we custom build a, a lot of the, uh, the, the products we make and um, you know, make changes to the specifications for individual customers, this thing, the, the, the VLM will adjust the shelf spacing on the fly for the height of the products in the shelf. And um, that improves the density of storage so very, very much. And it allowed us to, to you know, it, it potentially allowed us to free up so much floor space. So that was our kind of our, one of the main things that we were looking at. Uh, we d didn't realize there were so many other benefits, though, uh, getting into it. Um, we didn't need a, a huge storage of individual items, uh, but needed quick access to a fairly large number of SKUs. Uh, and this is specifically for the hardware we ship with kitchen cabinetry. You know, slides and pulls and hinges and screws and so on. And there's a few thousand SKUs. Um, and the VLM seemed to fit that bill uh, regarding this cabinet hardware really well. As far as operations uh, go on that subject, we needed a uh, quick retrieval of individual items. And this certainly beats the system we were using. You know, we had to order pickers using these vertical things driving around and uh, uh, it, it, took, it took forever to get all these pieces together and would inevitably uh, also lead to misplaced items or things stored in wrong locations and items being temporarily misplaced or double ordered, etc. As there are thousands of SKUs we were working with. Um, the uh, regarding operator efficiency and safety, the operator would have to go up and down and all over to retrieve these things. And there's certainly more room for injury and more lower and a much lower efficiency retrieving these items. You already expanded on a few of the specifics, so thanks for intersecting that already. Uh, I want to highlight a couple other granular areas that are often pain points uh, on the warehouse or manufacturing floor. That would also be employee efficiency and safety. So before that vertical lift machine was integrated, uh, as you were managing those storage and accessibility pain points, how did those domino effect into, uh, you know, any issues around employee efficiency or employee safety, or how did they just miss the mark in general? And how did that inform your search? Well, uh, if you imagine an employee on one of these uh, vertical lift machines, uh, they're kind of strapped with a tether that they, you know, can't fall off. And they have to reach into uh the um uh the racking uh, you know to the shelving to pull an item and some of these uh, you know a box of of slides for cabinetry slides would be maybe about 40 or 50 pounds and and put them onto the shelf on the vertical lift uh device 
and go down with it, there's there's room for you know back injury and so on. And you can't you it, it takes a fairly strong person to do that kind of thing all day. Being you know high up in the air, like our ceiling heights are almost thirty feet, so it it can get it's a little scary up there. And not every person uh, applying for for jobs here is even remotely interested in that kind of work. Um, we uh, I don't know we think it's it's a lot safer this way. And another big one is general finances, right? Uh, these pain points, I'm sure, can create uh, unexpected costs and can impact your bottom line. So as you were maneuvering those pain points, how were they impacting your bottom line, your budget, and you know, your financing operations? Yeah, we, we pride ourselves in having a lot of data uh, and keeping track of a lot of things in um uh, we did a little study on the time it took us to fill a hardware order and, and estimated the time saved with the VLM to justify this expense. Uh, we were going to be okay if there was no time saved in, uh, because our people were pretty efficient. They, they worked hard and knew, you know, this was a, a, a kind of a high um, labor thing we were doing to a product that essentially is not very expensive you know the little hardware items are not worth a lot so you can't spend a lot of time on them individually um but we were going to be okay if there's no time saved but the in the inventory tracking would be uh, we we decided would be a big improvement and that would might be pay payback enough in our minds and as it turned out the vlm increased our output uh, almost double and it result in a much improved uh, standard operating procedure of that job, you know, to go and retrieve and store hardware. Uh, the people we had doing it before had to be on their game, remembering an unbelievable string of things, trying to make their pick routes efficient. Uh, it's a huge improvement on levels we didn't expect. And um, we can now have this done by summer students and off shift people without uh, danger involved in vertical travel lifts and extensive training we used to do etc uh, you know people can come and go from that job a little easier uh, so it's probably saving us uh, a significant uh, amount of wages because we just can have a you know don't have to have a rocket scientist doing this uh, we haven't had uh, it quite long enough to give us a precise breakdown on the savings it has brought us, but we know it's very substantial. So now let's bring Veter more into the conversation. When you landed on Veter as your trusted solution partner, what was it about their vertical lift machine that stood out most to you? Can you describe some of the ways that it uh, you know, caught your eye and then once integrated began to fill your needs in practice? Give us that general overview and then we'll get more specific. Well, we thought the software running the storage device and us being able to integrate with it would probably be its biggest feature. Uh, but we found out that, yeah, it's, it's significant and, and amazing, but the, the bigger thing for us is the density uh, that you can store things in in a, in a small space. You can store so much stuff because these uh, shelf spacings are... Uh, adjusted live with every item you put on the shelf, you know, so uh, it, it uh, uh, puts them as close together as it can with however tall these pieces are on the shelves. And uh, for someone using it standalone, it is, it is amazing. But when integrated with other order tracking and fulfillment systems, um, it's probably the biggest selling feature for us still, I would think. Uh, I mean, the concept of automated storage notwithstanding, uh, if you know what I mean. And now let's get, like I said, a little bit more specific. I want to understand some of the domino effects that having Veter's vertical lift machine in your facility created around basically the same specifics that we just discussed around your pain points. So let's start around storage space and capacity. How did this vertical lift machine begin to create some solutions and some uh, ease of operational headaches around managing your storage space and the capacity of items that you could keep in storage? Yeah, um, well, capacity and uh, space. I, I, we're saving a ton of very expensive floor space. Uh, and when the second machine arrives, 
uh, shortly, it will clean up uh, a really significant space for us. Uh, it's really high density and the adaptability to item size is, the, is really a, a giant feature in that regard. Um, items we store are so different in size and that's really a, a major problem, uh, which this thing addresses well. Uh, so yeah, that's, I think that's pretty major. Expanding slightly, uh, how did the VLM impact your general operations? Uh, is there anything that, you know, as you were managing your operational pain points really clicked or uh, you noticed had some ripple effects across that uh, start to finish workflow for your production? After, I think, second in line after the storage density would be um, the integration to which we haven't really quite completed it to our ending state, I would say, are the integration into our uh, uh, enterprise system. Um, uh, I think what surprised us is how easy it is to operate and that less training for uh, staff and making it an easier job, uh, easier to staff is, is a huge feature for us. Um, but the storage density and uh, using vertical space, which is often wasted way up high when you have a, a high ceilings, like we, you know, I think our this first VLM was 24 feet tall. So you know that when you can use the, sp the the space right to your right to the rafters, it's uh, it's amazing, and speed is another. It's really made a big difference. We brought up employee efficiency as well as employee safety earlier. Let's intersect the VLM there. How did having Veter's vertical lift machine uh, create an impact around your employees' ability to move product down the line faster and get to a finished solution faster, as well as do so in a safer way? I think I sort of covered that. It's much safer, much more efficient than zooming around on these vertical lift order pickers. Uh, that is just not a very efficient thing when you, you know, by comparison, when you're standing in one spot, you have a little table we're working on opposite the the veter and um uh, you we we scan a barcode on our on our uh, work order uh for each item and these things are presented to you in in seconds uh it's it's really pretty quick and safe and finally let's intersect money again the big mover. Uh, can you break down how this VLM has created some ripple effects and uh, have you seen that represented in your data with having something that is safer and more efficient, creating some positives for your bottom line and your general finances? Well, yeah, we see them, we see them as a good value. Um, we generally jump on anything that has a four year or less payback that we can calculate. And for us in our situation, we believe it's paying back in less than two years. And uh, that's being with the floor space advantages being hard to calculate on top of that. Uh, it's decide we decided on a second machine within two months of getting this first one up and running. So that should pretty much tell you our view on it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, if you're buying a second one, things must be going well. So that's good to hear. Now, playing off of that, the fact that you're investing in a second one means that I'm sure you're wanting to integrate it even more into your processes moving forward. So uh, if you haven't explained any of this already or there's anywhere else to give some detail, could you share some more on how Feeders VLM has been integrated into your processes from beginning to end of your project life cycle? Uh, but more importantly, how you see having two of them on your work floor playing into your business strategies moving forward? Yeah, well, we're still working on the final iteration of the more complete software link up, uh, but otherwise it's already performing very well. Uh, if we see a situation where vertical storage and retrieval of this nature will fit the bill, we'll definitely be getting in touch with them. Uh, that we're really pleased that the second machine, um, they will customize it for us a little bit in that it will have one common software that will operate both of them. They're, they're going to be standing side by side. Uh, so, uh, you know, we, we don't have to guess wh where the, um, in which one of the machines, a certain SKU or a certain uh, item is uh, being stored. 
but a scanning a barcode will turn on the correct machine and and give us the the, the piece we're looking for in in seconds. I want to get into the relationship aspect of this as well uh, because. You know, though Veter can provide a quality solution, I think what also uh, helps keep these kinds of third-party partners around and uh, maintaining that healthy relationship is finding partners that are willing to be more than just a hardware provider. So, what was the Veter experience like from a B two B standpoint? Working with them, you know, professional to professional, and after working with them, how do you view Veter in the landscape of? critical suppliers of material handling and inventory management solutions. Yeah, well, the uh, transactions were fairly simple. Uh, they invited us to a factory visit to see them building these machines. Uh, so we went, checked them out firsthand. And uh, after a short review, we got our quote and uh, placed the order. Terms for that order were pretty standard to the industry, I would say. So all good. It was, uh, I, I, we had no... Um, yeah, we have no qualms dealing with them from a business-to-business -business, uh, standpoint at all. Is having solutions partners that extend beyond just hardware or software suppliers something that's important for Elias Woodwork? And if so, can you break down some of those standards that you look for in your partners and what of that you saw in Veter? Well, quick and comprehensive turnaround on service is very important to us. Uh, you can imagine when you're shipping thousands of pieces a day and, uh, you know, storing and retrieving items, uh, you, you simply can't be broken down for a long period of time. Uh, you know, minutes are a problem, hours are a serious problem, and a day or two is ridiculous. We, I mean, everything, uh, our, our shipping departments and so on, they clog up really quick when things don't go, go well. So, uh, when... Uh, your customer satisfaction depends on quick turnarounds. So does our supplier and equipment vendor service. And that is our absolute top priority with an equipment vendor. They got to jump to the pump. Uh, we are running flat out multiple shifts just to fulfill the daily orders. And uh, equipment just can't be down. Uh, it, it, we just don't have room for that to be happening. And so we've tended to align ourselves with people, with uh, vendors of equipment that uh, understand that and behave that way for us. And, uh, you know, the early indications are that um, Veter is uh, here to do the job and, and understands that. So, yeah, we're, we're pretty pleased so far. So, Ralph, in summary, why would you recommend Veter then, especially for companies that deal with some of the similar pain points that you felt in your operations and warehouse management? What would be your elevator pitch for uh, giving Veter as the one-stop shop? Well, if you need storage density and efficiency uh, in terms of like quick uh, in-out um, and uh, inventory management as a bonus and your production size factors fit the categories of the VLM, absolutely. Uh, it's uh, I think it's one of the most versatile solutions out there it's it can be used standalone it can be tagged into uh you know bigger software systems uh, um you know with their uh you know ability to be uh, to allow programming from outside to communicate um it's it's quite a yeah it, it's it's really a well thought out piece of equipment Fantastic. Ralph, thank you so much for your time on the podcast here, giving us this breakdown of some of Elias Woodworks differentiators, some of your pain points in uh, production managing of supplies and just general warehouse efficiency and how a solution like Veter's VLM stepped in to take charge and help ease some of that pain. It's really been a pleasure getting to chat today and pick your brain a bit here on how you're putting some quality tech to work. So thank you again to Ralph Fair, president and CEO of Elias Woodwork. And Ralph, if folks want to find out more about Elias, some of the work that you do, or get in touch, how can they do so? Well, we have a 1-800-665-0623 is a... Uh, toll free number. Uh, you can talk to customer service representatives uh, anytime. We we're a very very busy place, and um, 
really aren't looking for a ton of new customers, <laughs> but you know, we, we'd love to work for everybody, but uh, our business model has worked well for us and we are very busy people and we are uh, equally happy to um, align ourselves with Veter and uh, their work and we see them being uh, them being successful uh, like we have been and because they're building a top shelf uh, uh, product yeah we wish uh, Veter all the success for sure Fantastic. Ralph, thanks again for your time. It's been a pleasure. Uh, good to be here. And thank you everyone for listening to another episode of Vertical with Veter, a Veter podcast. If you like what you heard and want to listen to previous episodes, make sure that you're subscribing to our podcast on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And make sure you're heading to our website, storevertical.com. Again, storevertical.com for more information on our solutions, services, and other Veter content. I'm your host, Daniel Litwin, the voice of B2B. Till next time.